And given the climate in Washington and, and given the uh, Democratic majority over there, it's hard to imagine uh, a more important race this year in Connecticut, uh, particularly in view of the uh, well-funded and well-known opponents. So it's my pleasure to introduce Mr. Peter Schiff. Hi, everybody. I still look crowded in this small room, but uh, you know, I'm trying not to take up all the oxygen. But um, let me just explain a little bit about uh, who I am and why I decided to run for the United States Senate. I'm, you know, I run a business uh, out of Westport, Connecticut. It's a broker firm, uh, Europe Pacific Capital. And you know, I, invest, I invest money mostly for individuals uh, such as yourselves. I do have a small institutional business, but it's mainly a retail shop and I deal with uh, individual clients. And in the course of my investment career, I've been very focused on Washington, on policies coming out of Congress, uh, things that the Federal Reserve has done. And I found that what they were doing was very disruptive to our economy, undermining our businesses, debasing our currency. And as a result, I found myself really being very defensive in the way I advise people to invest their money, trying to protect myself from all the foolish, irresponsible things being done in Washington. And at this point, Rather than simply you know, trying to figure out how to protect myself from what they're doing, it's now so bad and the danger of their policies is so great that I feel it, it is worth my time to try to go to Washington and actually stop those destructive policies from being enacted. I mean, if I can do that, I think I could be of great service to the country and, you know, and then maybe I would, I'd be able to change my investment philosophy a little bit. And so I'm running for Senate. And if you look at what's happening right now, the people who are in charge, the people who are leading the country right now, these are the same people that led us to the disaster that we're now in. And of course, they're all trying to tell us that what they've done is work, that the economy is recovering, that because of their stimulus and the bailouts that they did, that the, the economy is now on, on the mend, that we're having it recovered. That's all nonsense. We're not recovering from anything. The economy is sicker than ever before. All we've done is we've borrowed trillions of dollars and we've spent it. And as we spend borrowed money, the GDP goes up a little bit because we count everything we buy as part of GDP. But what we ignore, you know, while we're looking at the spending side, is we ignore the liabilities. We're actually going <coughs> deeper into debt. The cost of this extra GDP is substantial. It's exactly what we did following the bursting of the Nasdaq bubble. You know, government never learns from its mistakes. It just repeats them on a grander scale, and that's what we're doing. But when, when George Bush was first elected, you know, he came into office with similar circumstances, just not as grave as Barack Obama. Uh, he inherited a bursting Nasdaq bubble from Bill Clinton. And when the Nasdaq bubble burst, we were going to have a pretty substantial recession. There was no question about that, because recessions normally are proportionate to the booms that precede them. Because the recession is actually the market's way of curing the economy from all the problems that developed during that boom. During the Nasdaq boom, the problem was a lot of companies got funded, got capital that never should have existed because they didn't make any profits. And so they hired people, they rented office space. But when the bubble burst, it exposed all those malinvestments. And so people have to lose their jobs. Businesses have to fail. Uh, there is some transitionary pain. People lose their money. Uh, they bet money on, on foolish uh, business plans. And so there's normally a recession. And during that time, the market works out all these problems and reallocates resources to where they're more effectively utilized. But during that process, the politicians can't help but try to promise that they can do something about it, that they can ease the pain, that they can stimulate. And that's what, that's what Bush did. That's what uh, Alan Greenspan did. They slashed interest rates down to 1%. Uh, they ran up budget deficits, very small by today's standards, but they ran up some significant deficits. And they created a housing bubble. It was government policy that almost deliberately inflated a housing bubble so that we can keep spending money and not have to go through a recession. So we spent. We spent trillions of dollars on stuff that we couldn't afford. Our trade deficits went ballistic. They were going at $60 billion a month for a while. We bought all sorts of stuff that we couldn't afford. And we put it on a charge card. And we bought houses that we couldn't afford. We bid them through the roof. We overpaid for houses because of all this cheap money that was flowing through the economy, courtesy of the Federal Reserve. But, of course, as we were spending all that money, our leaders were telling us the economy was great because all they were looking at was the consumption. 
They ignored the debt. They ignored the damage to our economy that was being done by that reckless policy. And of course, when the bubble finally burst, as they always do, right, the market is now trying to correct the problems. Lending standards were too lax, tightening them up. Real estate prices were too high. They're coming down. We had too many people working in financial services, too many people working in retail, because we were spending too much. We weren't saving enough. We weren't producing enough. So the market is trying to reallocate our resources so that we can have a stable economy. But the government doesn't want that to happen. Here again, all they want to do is try to find a way to stimulate the economy so they can get reelected one more time. So Barack Obama is repeating all the mistakes of Bush, only on a bigger scale. Ben Bernanke is even more irresponsible, even more reckless than, than Alan Greenspan. And so now we are laying the foundation for an even bigger collapse that's probably going to happen in 2011, maybe 2012. That's going to make, you know, 2008 is going to look like the roaring 20s compared to what's coming in the next couple of years. And it's not because of capitalism. It's not because that the free market failed. Uh, it didn't fail. It was government that failed. It was central planning that failed. It was central bankers that failed, not the free market. Yeah, Wall Street was greedy. Everybody likes to point to the fact that Wall Street was greedy. Well, people on Wall Street have always been greedy. That's why they're there, right? People on Main Street are greedy, too. The problem is that greed never got us into trouble. Normally, you know, it's, we all benefit from that. People work hard, they produce, they achieve great things because they're greedy. The problem is, under normal circumstances, people's greed is tempered by some fear. People want to make money, but they don't want to lose money. But the federal government took that fear away. They, they made things riskless. Alan Greenspan was there to bail people out. The Fed lowered interest rates to nothing so that we can gamble cheap. And, of course, you had entities like Freddie and Fannie that were guaranteeing everybody's mortgages. You know, none of these mortgages could have been originated without a government guarantee because people would have been too afraid to make the loans. But once the government said, don't have, have no fear, make the loans, because if they go bad, we're going to bail you out. So we had all this reckless lending. But the bigger problem now, and I, you know, I was I was talking about this stuff a long time ago. I'm not, a, you know, somebody like um, you know Dick Blumenthal today just announced that he's you know wants to file lawsuits against the rating agencies. You know, talk about closing the barn door after the horses have left. I mean, where was where was Dick Blumenthal four years ago? Right when I was on national television, I was going around the country and I was writing books, warning about the fact that the ratings were phony, warning that all these securities were going to collapse. Maybe if he had done something back then, it could have made a difference. Doing it now, it's you know, it's just jumping on a bandwagon, it's grandstanding. But I was out there all over the country, warning about these about these problems. I started going on CNBC. In, in 2005, they started calling me Dr. Doom because of the things that I was saying. And I was a regular for four years on those shows. I was going on a Fox, CNN, a Bloomberg, warning about the housing bubble, warning about the financial crisis that was coming when it burst, warning about the insolvency of Freddie and Fannie. All the problems, all the things that finally manifest themselves in 2008, I was warning about it for years. I wrote a book about it. I started writing in 2005, and I think I finished by mid-2006, and it came out in February 2007 called Crash Proof, How to Profit from the Coming Economic Collapse, in which I laid out what was going to happen. And the reason that I was able to understand all these problems was because I understood how government policy was distorting the free market and creating the problems. And when I wrote Crash Proof, the, the, my biggest fear was not that the, nat the real estate bubble would burst and that we would have the greatest recession since the Great Depression, that unemployment would exceed 10%. I knew that was coming. But I, I thought the economy could withstand that. It wouldn't be fun, but we could, we could survive that. But what I was afraid of is that we couldn't survive the government cure. I knew that when all this happened, the government would make the same mistakes again, that they would refuse to let market forces operate, that they would try to reflate the housing bubble, they would just try to print money. I wrote in my book that they would probably bail out Freddie and Fannie after they failed, but that would be a mistake. But they would create all this money that our deficits, I wrote that our deficits would, 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 would exceed a trillion dollars a year, that our budget deficits, and it happened. And that's the real problem, that's the real danger, is that the government is out of control. And the government has now grown to such an enormous proportion that the entire economy is being crushed beneath its weight. And there is no way that we can recover. There is no recovery from our current situation. If people want to wonder, you know, why, why, why are there no jobs? Why are people losing jobs? Because the government is now so expensive, it's destroying businesses. The capital that businesses need to invest and grow, it's not there anymore. Because the government is taking it all. The government is borrowing it all. The budget deficit now, annually, is 1.5 trillion dollars. That's the budget deficit. 
That's about the same budget that we had maybe in 1997. That's the entire